four steps. First, the calling. The calling, if you'd write that on the board. You all went through that. You know what the calling is. You're just sick and tired of life. Uh, you know something's got to change. You hear this, there's this kind of almost haunting, nagging voice within you that you try to ignore, and it's, uh, the voice is saying, it's time, it's time, it's time. And you try to avoid it. You, you try to focus on your life, or you smoke a lot of pot, drink a lot of wine, but it's time is still there. This is pre-awakening. And sometimes it, it, it actually could go for lifetimes, but usually it lasts maybe three, four, five years, d depending where you are in your life. But it's the calling. You go from there into uh, awakening. Awakening number two. And awakening. Oh, I I I'm going to need you on the microphone after you write that. The awakening. You remember your awakening? Uh, some of you had it, boom, it was just right there. Some of, uh, some of you kind of slid into it. But remember the, that euphoria, that innocence of awakening. You suddenly realize there is more out there. There is more to life than, than this. Uh, lights up. Uh, uh, Linda on the microphone. Uh, tell me real quickly about uh, the, your awakening. I, I mean, like, was it joyful? Was it happy? Uh, what, what was that like? Did it happen in a, in a lightning bolt or? Yeah, I'd say it happened. It started happening pretty quickly. Yeah, when yeah. When it started, yeah. And what was it like at first? Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. All the answers. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and did you feel you wanted to run and tell everybody about it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And what yes. did I found? The, I found the new program. I found the new discipline. The new thing to do. Yeah. yeah. To improve everything. And of course, they sleep, were super better sleep, better everything. Be better sex, yeah. better sleep, better yeah. yeah. Uh, and they were super impressed by all this. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no. like, woo, woo, woo. Um, and how long did that, um, what I call the initial euphoria, the uh, kind of the innocence of, us, uh, of awakening, take place? Um, wait, uh, two years? Two One years. Year? Oh, that's yeah, pretty good. Like that, two yeah. years. Kind of walking on clouds for two years. Yeah, and, and I was allowing some shifts in my life during sure. that time. You know, it wasn't wasn't all uh, make-believe, but yeah, it was a couple of years, and then things started falling apart. Yeah, good, more, good. So. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a very typical pattern. Uh, if things started falling apart, but, oh, good, thank you. Uh, good answer. Uh, next. So, awakening. What was that like? I remember, remember that? Y yes, oh. your awakening. <laughs> well, I was trying to remember my awakening. Um, did it happen in a moment, or I think I think in a way it did. It was an old boyfriend who was in tears because he didn't know what path to take. Oh, and I said, "There's lots of paths. There's no one right path." And I think I didn't know where that came from. I thought that was kind of wise. Of Maybe me. your spirit guides or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind wow. of silly now, but you know, it was. I think that's when I thought, "Oh, you know, yeah, I can." I. I know some stuff I didn't know I knew. Yeah. I and, and how long did this innocence of awakening take place? Was it a month or a year or what? Mm. Uh, probably, it, it's probably still happening. Ah. I think. You haven't gone through losing everything, life oh, going to yeah. hell? Oh, oh, well, yeah. No, I mean, I have done the. Because you'd have that to look okay. forward to. Okay. <laughs> no, I no. Okay, so I have gone up and down a lot. I mean, we sure. all. We, I get to the place where I think, oh, this is it. I've I've got it. Right. And then just like the Boom. young man over there. Why, why is that? Why is that? Well, you know, up and down. Next... And, you know, uh, suddenly one day you feel like, oh, I've got enlightenment. That the next day, the garbage truck pulls up and. Yeah, or or in six months. Yeah, yeah. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I think. Mm, I was going to say the word level. I think there's another level, but maybe that's Machio. So, <laughs> <laughs> who's speaking I, here? I, master, human, master, human <laughs> conflict. I'm yeah, sorry. no. I mean, just take a deep breath, master. And why is that? Why do we go through the ups and downs? Yeah, yeah. Because we're addicted to the downs. Mm, that's good. I like that. Because uh, that's what I know. That's the pattern. Drama experience, mm -hmm. all the rest of that. Well, we got to have the downs, we believe, so that we can go back up Well, again. the ones coming in after you have to do that up and down and up and down. Y well, no, I hope they don't. Yeah, they well, maybe we all little. secretly wish just a little bit. <laughs> a little you know? bit. <laughs> not, not too much, but just a little bit, because otherwise they haven't really earned their wings. Right. Good, thank right. you. Okay. Uh, one more. 
that awakening, that, that time of innocence, that time of, yes? Crap. <laughs> that time of crap. Right? crap. So uh, your awakening, that, that uh, joyful, innocent part, uh, how did it happen? Uh, in a room with a lot of people, and uh, an in- instant it happened in the front of the room. So yeah. it, was, it was awesome, lasted for years. Now the fucking garbage truck backs up every other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, it's, isn't it's it, up and down. You know, I mean, it is it is the true history of Chambra anywhere around the world. You know, you hit the uh, the awakening. Uh, thank you. Um, and, and you hit the awakening. I'm going to call that uh, the new day, the new day. If you would write that under awakening, ah, suddenly you realize there's so much more. It's a new day. Everything. Is coming up lollipops. It's just like, oh, euphoria. And it lasts for, I don't know, sometimes three or four months, sometimes a couple of years, until everything goes to the dark night. If you would write that as number three, the dark night. You start experiencing the dark night, and you wonder, you doubt yourself, what happened to the awakening? What happened to this innocence, this naivety? The, this joyfulness. Now you got the dark night. Now you're dealing with the demons within. And like I said before, they're not on the outside. These demons are they're from the inside. And now you're dealing with them. Why? Oh why? Oh why? The dark nights. As you go into this realization and you wonder, is this even real? Am I just making this up? You, you, you start thinking back, oh, if I could just have my awakening days back. No way. They're gone. You are now in the dark nights. And these demons pop up and they make you wonder, is this real? Are, are you a lunatic like everybody is saying you are? A crazy witch, a wild lunatic. <laughs> and maybe you're just – maybe you are freaking delusional. Maybe you're going insane, and maybe you should really go talk to that doctor that they've been <laughs> recommending for a while. Why the dark nights? Oh. <laughs> Why the dark nights? As the audience lights come down. <laughs> I'm still in the light. Uh, sorry about you, but well, you got a lot of stuff that's buried real deep. And it comes up. You cannot bring it into realization. You cannot bring your shit into realization. That's why Kathumi's coming by with a garbage truck to help pick it up. You simply can't. An unworthy being cannot go into realization. There is a dragon at the doorway that's making sure that you don't. That's what threshold is all about. There's a dragon at the doorway making sure that you don't bring your stuff into embodied realization. It is a blessing. It's not a curse. It's going to feel like a curse at times, but it's actually a blessing. You would go insane if you tried – if you forced your way – tried to force your way into enlightenment while still having issues of unworthiness. You would go insane. They've, some have tried it before. They've tried to battle that dragon at the door. They have tried to force their way in, and some have done it uh, with uh, somewhat unnatural means – drugs uh, and some of these ceremonies, these extreme ceremonies. They try, to, they try to trick the dragon that is at the door, and they end up getting very, very mentally imbalanced, because if one is unworthy, feels unworthy, and tries to go into enlightenment, boom, it all breaks down. The dark night is meant to do a couple things. Go in and find all that crap, those feelings of unworthiness that are at many different layers and levels. They're coming from past lives. They're coming from this lifetime. And you could tell yourself all day long, look in the mirror and saying, I'm a good person, I love myself, but you don't really believe it. It's kind of macchio. It's kind of like uh, trying to frost the cake with crap. 
That was a nice visual. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I'm so sorry about the cake that you brought. I shouldn't have mentioned that. It's really chocolate. That's really, really chocolate. <laughs> okay. Now, there, there is another important component to the dark night uh, that, that plays in so well to everything we're doing right now. I'm talking a lot about how now energy serves you. Energy, that's, that's where we're at right now, allowing energy to serve you. It's the easy life. Edith, is that you way back there? Yeah. Oh, I see you. Yeah. It's the easy life, allowing energy to serve you. But a lot of you don't think you're worthy. I hear the words, you say, yes, I'm ready for realization. Yes, I'm ready to let energy serve me. But I've been watching this last month, because we're really amping it up now with allowing energy to serve you. And there's a lot of feelings of unworthiness. You put a toe into the water of this pool of energy, but you're not letting yourself jump in. It's, it's a monster unto itself. It's a huge issue. So I say that the physics, uh, the, the true physics are there is consciousness, the I Am. Its passion creates energy. The energy is here to serve you. And that all sounds wonderful, but when the reality hits, are you really ready to let energy serve you? Or are you going to rely on things on the outside? Are you going to call that, I let energy serving me by trolling social media? Edith, I'm sorry, but I paid you money to say this. Are you going to call that letting energy serve me? That's not. That's continuing to look outside. There is so much energy that's right here ready to serve you. But if you're not feeling worthy, you are going to block it. You are going to block it. You're going to stop it. If you're feeling that you're going to be seduced by power, by money, by control over others, you've got this wealth of energy that's right here, right now. But what I'm observing, this phenomena across Chamberland, with a few exceptions, of course, but I'm observing this phenomena of you turning your back on it, of you waiting, of you not applying it, of you saying the words, but it, it, it really like saying the words like it was a mantra, but you're not believing that you're ready. And that was kind of the reason my month was tough. When I watched how it's here now, but you're wondering, am I worthy? Am I going to abuse it? Am I going to just then get sucked right back into the human ways? You, you've restrained yourself. You've stopped yourself from an energy flow that's actually very natural. It's all here, Edith, and all of you. It's all here. But it's about you now understanding that you have spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is when <clears throat> you realize that, that this whole thing of the human inexperience, without judgment, and the Master being the wisdom, and the I Am now coming together, spiritual maturity where you realize what energy really is and where it comes from, right here. Spiritual maturity is allowing. Spiritual maturity is, first, being a creator. And you know, if you listen to I Am Creation and didn't just think you already freaking knew about it, if you listen to it and understood it is so simple, if you cannot afford it, figure out a way to do it. True creation is the joy, and it's the joy now of the human, the Master, the I Am, all present right here. It's the radiance of that joy without 
any agenda, without defining it, without limiting it, just the open expression, radiance of that joy. That's it. That is creation. That's it. Immaturity is saying, well, what did I create? How big is it? Where is it? How am I going to benefit? That's immaturity. True spiritual maturity is, I create, a la tone. I create. And then I go into that experience. I go into that creation, and I allow it to be whatever, because it is my creation, not somebody else's. It is my energy that is coming in now to serve me within my creation. That's spiritual maturity. Not defining it, not saying what day it has to come, or how big, or how much money, or anything else like that, what kind of car it's going to deliver. (coughs) That is spiritual immaturity. That is naivety. That is why many of you have held back this last month from letting energy truly serve you. You wondered if you were going to get into that game. You wondered if you were going to be spiritually immature and, and do the things that maybe the human would have done before, saying that, uh, OK, I'm a creator. I'm going to create uh, new money, new car, new job, a better, better physical body, better mind. Let that go. Take a deep breath into your spiritual maturity. You are not going to go back to those old things. Fear not yourself right now, any of you. You've got the wisdom of the Master, the presence of the I Am, and the beauty of the experience of the human. Fear not letting energy serve you. I know so many of you have held off on it, almost resisted it. You've let it be a mind thing, but not a living thing, because you didn't know if you were worthy. You didn't know if, if it was going to hold you back or corrupt you. Let's break through that right now, right now. You are. You wouldn't be here if you were not of spiritual maturity. And there's really, n- really nothing left to learn. Now it's about being in your creation. There's really n- nothing left to learn. 